enjoy it all. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Welcome to Bora Bora Tahiti. We just made it. We woke up this morning and the sunrise is about to happen. The water is calm and warm and I think it's just going to be the most amazing experience. We're on an overwater bungalow. This video is going to just cover what it's like to come to Tahiti, to the island of Bora Bora and stay at the Four Seasons here in an overwater bungalow. You told me there'd be better days And nothing that can pull us under You wanna take the pain away But know that I was born as a fighter We fear, we fear, but we're better than that We're better than that I know, you know, so I we hold Because this video is comprehensive, I created chapters so that you can easily navigate to the aspect that you want to see. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you a cost breakdown. Bora Bora is an island in the South Pacific and is part of Tahiti or French Polynesia. We left LAX on a Friday night and landed in Papite on the main island of Tahiti at 5 a.m. Saturday morning. I'm also creating a video on the Air Tahiti Nui business class flight, which should be coming soon. I was very happy with this carrier and thought their flight service was excellent. Tahiti is only an eight and a half hour flight from LAX or nine and a half hours from Seattle. Plus in business class, I slept all night, waking up ready for paradise. Tahiti is in the same time zone as Hawaii, so for West Coast people, there is no jet lag. As we deplaned onto the tarmac, the morning was still dark, but in the distance, I could hear Tahitian music coming from the customs building. As we entered, I saw the band and was excited, but soon this customs line became a holiday hell. Unfortunately, three large jets from the West Coast landed at the same time. This overwhelmed the facility and lines were wrapped in and out of the building, and these lines were not moving. It was extremely hot and humid, no air conditioning and no water. We were in the customs line for three hours and it was brutal. Tip, if landing at the Papite Airport in Tahiti is going to happen for you, make sure you keep your water bottle. Take the water bottle from the airplane that you're deboarding and bring it with you or fill it up before you get off the plane because I'm telling you, if you get stuck in that customs line, there is no water and it is so hot. After customs, we collected our luggage and took it over to the area for the inner island flights to be rechecked to Bora Bora. Our flight from LAX arrived really great, on time, really early, and now we're waiting for our 8.30 a.m. flight over to Bora Bora. And it's just like a really small airport. It reminds me of some of the original airports in Hawaii before they got redone. It's definitely open air, no AC, so it's pretty humid as soon as you arrive here and you're confronted by the king. What are you doing? Waiting in line. Inner Island flights are small pedal jumper planes. They have a two by two configuration and load from the back. Tip when boarding, pick the seats in the back of the plane because it is going to board from the back of the plane, but it's also going to deboard from the back of the plane. You have like a couple of the back row seats, you're gonna get off first. The flight from Papite to Bora Bora is 40 minutes. And during this short flight, you see other islands scattered across the deep blue ocean. Once landed at the small Bora Bora airport, you deplane on the tarmac and walk into the building. So we just landed here in Bora Bora. Basically, you deplane and then you walk over to this hut. And I think they're going to bring us our luggage. The airport is not connected to land. So the only way anywhere in Bora Bora is with a boat. Many of the luxury hotels have kiosks in this building. They greet you with a lay and start your resort check-in process. We went to the Four Seasons kiosk and they helped us get our bags loaded onto the boat. The Four Seasons Bora Bora has a couple of transfer boats, a large cruiser and a smaller, more classic looking boat. When we arrived, so did many other families. So we utilized the big boat. My understanding is that Saturday morning is a very busy arrival day because of the West Coast flights leaving on Friday night. On other days, I'm told it's more intimate and the smaller boat is used. It's about a 10 minute boat ride between the airport and the Four Seasons reception area. On the boat, we were given water and ice towels to help cool ourselves. As we cruised, there were views of the iconic Mount Atimanu, Bora Bora's central rock formation in the middle of the island. Bora Bora, like all volcanic islands, will inevitably disappear back into the ocean, and the process is witnessed firsthand in the gorgeous calm waters of the lagoon. The lagoon is like a lake, calm and protected by the barrier reef ring that surrounds Bora Bora. This allows for ocean life and seawater to remain calm and is the perfect setting for overwater bungalows. Many of the overwater bungalow resorts, including the Four Seasons, are built on the barrier reef ring facing towards the center of the island at Mount Atemanu. 
As the boat slows, we pull into the most picturesque reception hall and we are greeted with live music and reception hosts, each with a binder for each party. We were escorted to pastries and coffee by our assistant who was waiting on the deck to greet us. We arrived at the Four Seasons around 10 a.m. Saturday morning, which is amazing because you have the full day. Rooms are not available until 3 p.m. There is an option to pay $900 to get an earlier check-in, but we were never sure what time that was actually going to be, so instead we changed into our seats. In the reception hall, there is a large changing suite that guests who arrive early before rooms are available can use to change into swimwear. We headed to the pool, got chairs, and by 11 a.m. we had ordered lunch. Yeah. Carnival style right there. Mm. After lunch and swimming, our room was ready exactly at 3 p.m. And we were escorted in one of the golf carts out to our bungalow. This resort is large, which is the reason for cart service, especially at night after dinner. However, I did look forward to the daily gorgeous walks and we rarely called for a cart. The resort offers 115 spacious hideaways with 108 overwater bungalows and seven enormous beachfront villa estates. There are two docks, east and west, that are built into the lagoon and support all the overwater bungalows. There are 108 one and two bedroom overwater bungalows and 27 of them have private plunge pools. If you thought the overwater bungalows were expensive, well, they're actually the cheaper chicken compared to the beach villas. These are multi-bedroom beachfront villas that offer private beaches, pools, lush gardens, and more. I would love to be able to go back with our kids and stay in one of those. I think it'd be just fabulous and incredible and obviously ridiculously expensive. So if we come back with the boys, look at this setup is two connected footwater bungalows, which would be incredible. So always being price conscious, of course, we reserved the least expensive level of bungalow. It was a one bedroom on the east dock, no pool, and the back deck faced the beach of the beachfront villas rather than facing at Mount Atemanu, which is considerably more expensive. We really enjoyed our bungalow because it was midway down the dock so we could easily walk back and forth. The water off our dock was deep enough to jump into from the deck. Just tuck. It'll be fine. I'll, I'll jump in. If I become a pair of bleeping, I haven't even touched the uh, ocean water yet. Okay. It's always a ring. I come up. Okay, it's only like six feet deep and uh, the water's amazingly warm. Really? But if I had it tucked, I definitely would have impacted. I would have had massive impact. I got a lot of salt on my nose. How was it though? Felt good? Yeah. I'm just still taking in the salt. I like the water's very salty here. Extra salty. Oh. Hey. Oh. Good job. Yeah. Oh, if you dare me to do something. Do That's it. right. Facing the private villa beach was great because no one is there. So it's pristine and quiet. Plus the water is very protected. Of the docks, I prefer the east dock over the west dock. The west dock is close to the pool, the main beach, and all of the food. However, the backs of many of them face into the main beach area. And those bungalows have shallow water. And it seemed noisier on that side. Here is a tour of our overwater bungalow number 406. Every night I'm going on the grid, texting back. I want you, hit you up. I'm on the other side. I miss you, miss you. Take you off. I came your way to strong. Cannot keep it low key. Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof Bottle, your taste It's really a bad reception out there Where are you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? I've lost you But I need you And you're off my radar now But you're off my radar now Found myself in between the lines Underneath your bed sheets. It started fun, but now I'm into deep Into this flow A zero-sum game that I will lose There's no zipping past it 
Every time you walk away from me, I want you. How could I want you more? Oh, when did I lose my perspective? Oh, God, have I lost it? But my cravings for you so shameless. Can't get enough. I've lost you. But I need you. And you're off my radar now. I've lost you. Off my radar now I'm like an outcast from pillar to post There's no denial, I'm chasing ghosts I'm like an outcast from pillar to post Hitting you up, but I'm stuck on hold Is it really a bad reception out there? Where are you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? Yeah, I love So as soon as we got into the room, we did a quick arrival live, and you can see that here. After the live, we unpacked and headed quickly to the spa for couples massages. The spa at the Four Seasons Bora Bora is truly charming. Warm wood and vaulted ceilings beckon you inside. The offshore breeze blows through the main corridor, allowing inside and outside to blend beautifully. Past reception, there is a little changing room with lockers, robes, and slippers. We were escorted to another bungalow meant for couples massages. Okay, we just made it into the couples massage room and look at our view out this bungalow. I mean, come on, right? And because of the mommy makeover surgery I had, I'm actually going to do a maternity massage. That way I can be on my side and not be like on my front because that would just not feel good. Our therapists were both incredible. Their handwork was exceptional, and we both left feeling very pampered. Following the massage, we were told about the hot spas that we could enjoy. There are two spas at the Four Seasons in Bora Bora, and they are located in the spa facility. You do not need a service to use these spas. Unfortunately, the main pool does not have a warm spa, so if you love soaking in heated water as much as me, then you will go to the spa facility. We just finished the massage and then afterwards they said, why don't you guys go sit in the hot tub? We have one that faces the lagoon or one that faces the ocean. So we're facing the ocean. And isn't this lovely? Are you excited? How was your massage? So good. It was so good. The little girl's so freaking strong. <laughs> she worked my back. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're happy. It's good. Okay, let's be in the hot tub. After our spa experience, we returned to our bungalow to change for dinner. There are three dinner restaurants on the Four Seasons property and you need reservations, which the concierge helps you arrange when you book your stay. During our stay, we ate at all three dinner locations. We just made it to our first dinner. What is this restaurant called? An Ali Moana. Ali, Ali Moana. Ari, Ari Moana. Oh, Ari Moana. And it's like a Mediterranean mix. Also, these little lighted, like, I have to show you. Isn't this light fabulous? So it just clips onto the menu. I'm gonna pick something here, but it looks good. And look how pretty it is out here tonight. And then here is what the restaurant looks like inside. It's all open air, so I wasn't sure. I brought my like sequin duster because I wasn't sure if it was going to be cold, but definitely tank tops, you're totally fine because it's warm and humid, but not like uncomfortable. I think I'll get used to it. I'm, I'm maybe slightly a little sweaty. So Jason really, really loves ice and he's been like, they're so stingy here with ice because he asks for ice and says, I want a lot of ice. And then they bring him like a couple like cubes, cubes of ice. So again, he asked for more ice and we just thought, oh, they're gonna give him three cubes. But they came through and brought him a bowl of ice. <laughs> See, dreams do come true in Tahiti, Jason. That's right. Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Th
think you've done this before. Wow, it's just beautiful food. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What is this food? We have the mahi mahi and the steak, right? Ribeye. Ribeye is the best in Bora Bora Island. Oh. Wow. Put it to the test. Yeah. Maruru. Okay, I have to say the mahi mahi is delicious tonight. It has like a pesto sauce with it. It's so good. <laughs> so good. I really love the mahi mahi. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm glad that you're here. Perfect. Okay. Great recommendation Thank you. for you. Thank you. <gasps> <gasps> The Amati is the Asian restaurant here, and we really liked it. Like the tempura shrimp were really yummy. The stir fried beef and the kung pao chicken were delicious. And we have it on good authority that their bar has the best cocktails here. So, just so you know, this is probably the place you're going to want to be for your watering hole. All right, here's the Vayamiti menu. Jason just stole my light, so I have no idea. But he just ordered us some yummy shrimp. So we'll see. The crispy prawns from the, the hot menu. Crispy prawns. So this is the tuna tataki. This is the kung pao chicken. This is the, what is this? The Asian beef, I think. And then stir fry beef. Stir -fry beef and then just some rice. rice. But it looks delicious. And this is what it's looking like tonight. It's so beautiful. So the other restaurant they have here is an Italian restaurant called La Bella Vita. It's actually in the restaurant where you have breakfast in the mornings. This was our least favorite place to eat, unfortunately. On our fourth night, we went across the lagoon to the main island and ate at Villa Mahana. This is a very small French restaurant with only one seating per night. Tonight, we're actually taking a boat ride over to the main island in the center to go to a restaurant that's supposed to be super nice called Villa Mahana. It's like a small seating. There's only one service per night. So we're excited. And the boat leaves here at six. And we're like right at six. So hopefully, I think I see them waiting for us. Anyways, it should be a delicious evening. Enjoy. Oh, thank you so much. We're at Villa Mahana and the tiny little kitchen is so cute. And we're out on this patio underneath these trees. It's really beautiful. So I'm excited. It's supposed to be like the best French food. Go for it. Ooh. Yum. Okay, so this is the mahi mahi. It looks delicious. Ooh. Thank you so much. Hi. Yes, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. I have many thoughts about the food in Tahiti. Overall, the food is decent, but don't go to Tahiti thinking there will be a high level of culinary expertise. If food is a high priority for you, then go to Hawaii or Napa. After having time to contemplate, I believe they are doing a great job in the middle of the Pacific with very limited resources. The first night we ate at the Mediterranean restaurant called Aria Moana. Once we were finished with dinner the first night, we called for cart service and a ukulele player came up and escorted us to the cart and then played his ukulele the whole time back. And the guy who was driving the cart started singing in and it was just like so beautiful, definitely a magical experience and something that I'm so glad we had. And I think that that's one of the things that the Four Seasons there does well is that they try to create these very like special magical moments for their guests. And that night definitely was one for us. What an incredible ending to just an incredible day. I've got my pajamas on and we're just beat. So I'm ready to get into bed and sleep it off and get ready for tomorrow for another amazing, beautiful day here. Look at this. Oh my God.
This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I wasn't even anticipating that when I opened up the door. Later in the day, it gets more cloudy. So it's like so fresh right now. All right, let's walk. You got me feeling kind of crazy. You got me feeling like my head is spinning around. So we're almost at the end of the, what would you call this? These piers that go out to the bungalows. And now you can see that we're going to walk into the jungle. They're all beachfront bungalows versus the overwater bungalows. And they're like tucked into the jungle. It looks so pretty. Where you look is so amazing, amazing. So we'll just head back towards like reception and towards like where the food and everything is. Amazing. I could stare into your eyes for hours and hours. Is so behind me is the reception area. So you can see the boats. That's what the Four Seasons brings you over in. And that's where you check in. You don't really do a big check in. It's really awesome because when they greet you, everybody has like a folder and they're like anticipating your arrival. And that could be because they're triggered by the fact that when you land here in Bora Bora, you land over at the airport, which is on a separate island. I mean, they're all in the same like little grouping, but there's water in between those land masses. So when you check in at Bora Bora, you actually check in and let the reservationist for Four Seasons know you're there. They grab your bags, they put it on the boat, and then they bring you here, and then they're all waiting for you, and there's, like, somebody playing music. They have all of these really beautiful lagoons everywhere throughout the property, so there's lots of bridges and pathways all around this crystal clear, beautiful water. You can see the fish in there. You can go snorkeling. So fun. Oh, you can even see coral reef in there. Okay, there's also this, like, beautiful shop I went in there. They have, like, gorgeous dresses, shoes, bathing suits. Jason forgot his awesome sunglasses that we got him specifically for this trip. So we went in there to see if we could get him new ones. Unfortunately, they had one pair for men and they were a thousand US dollars. So we passed. But it is an amazing store and they have some like really beautiful like scented oil diffusers that we're going to take home to remind us of this beautiful place. This is the other side of the water bungalow. So that, like I said, there's two like little arteries that go off and this is like the west side one, which is closer to the pool and the dining area. Yeah, it's two different piers. We was told we ate dinner last night, right? Okay, we're gonna go to our first breakfast at Terra Nui, it looks like. I think that's where we have breakfast every morning. some water. Water. What are we filming on, Jason? It's a DJI Ronin Pro 3. That's the gimbal. And then we are utilizing one of my Sony A7, but this is the C5. So this lens is interchangeable, but it's also zoom and it's nice and small. And then we're using, what is the audio? It's a Sony, actually I don't remember what it's called, but okay. it's, a, it's a Sony brand for this camera. Okay, perfect. We'll link to it all below. Ooh, juice. We have. Freshly squeezed. Oh, yes, please. Oh, I can just get a. Oh, we got mango bottles. Yum. If you watch my other travel videos, you know that I love a morning breakfast buffet. Like it's my favorite thing, especially when you get like the savory and the sweets. And this morning I got like some salad, a roasted tomato, some bacon, a yogurt parfait that looks delicious, and the fresh squeezed orange juice is legitimately fresh and delicious. La, la, la. husband all set up for me gimbaled mic'd everything's right <laughs> we are first on the beach today i don't know what it is like soft seaweed in the water but there is also rocks I saw the city passing by my window. 
was in the crowd, but I felt so alone. Looked at my phone like every other second. My future was blurry and numb. A tunnel where there's no light. Oh, but then you came and sat right next to me. Your eyes, they glowed and filled me up. We had never... Okay, this is our tent area here. This is where we're kind of relaxing, getting out of the sun for the day. It was like Kim's food just arrived. My just oh came. my gosh, how does it look? It's good. Actually, Have you tried it yet? I did. I took one bite and it was actually better than I thought. It, it was, was good, good, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, they they don't do a lot of very good things on their lunch menu. The wings are okay, and the hamburger seems to be really good. So when you come here, don't expect a good fish meal, which you should expect here for some I reason. Mean, the but the ceviche was good. Oh, it was good. Mm -hmm. They did like a separate ceviche bar day today, though. They, they over at the grill. That's not always there. Yeah, so if they do a separate side thing, that's fun. But on their own, they're not doing a great job. However, the burger's good, the wings are good. No wings are anything. Wings are okay. So at At The Pool, they also have like different food things that they do on certain days. And today is ceviche day. So I just ordered the Mexican ceviche with the tuna. You can see the chef is out here. He's going to prepare it fresh. And look at how beautiful the lineup is. Oh yeah, the tuna, so beautiful, it looks so good, so fresh. Right from the advance, if you have any salt, mix everything before without putting any dressing. Right, because then it gets soggy, right? Yes, and it's going to start to cook the meat. Ah. Uh, and straight away after you have nothing else to do than just to season it and send it for your oh, customers. Oh yum. We have a tiradito sauce, it's a sauce made with uh, Lime juice, sriracha, a bit of fish. So, so that will start cooking it a little bit because yes. of the citrus or the yes. acid. The acid, yeah. It's Yum. nice and uh, tart. And the flavor is good, nice and citrusy. Oh, you know, yes. Some uh, nice uh, sauteed corn, some raw onion, some uh, stirring down. Oh. Start with the beautiful guacamole. Okay. The bottom of the dish, you can bring it. Okay, we have further soup in the side. Oh. Yum. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I Thank you. <laughs> Maruru. <laughs> bon appétit, Andrew. Bon okay. Thank you. Thank welcome. you. See you again soon. Mm, those look good too. We are going shark diving. It's gonna be like a full day adventure. I can't wait. Doing it in Tahiti, I think is gonna be incredible. Jason loves snorkeling, so we're super excited for this. Apparently they do like a barbecue lunch or something, so that should be really yummy too. Just got on the boat. Yes, yes. yes. thank you. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Actually now it's a little bit like a private boat for you. That's right. I love it. That's right. I That's what I signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> and the good fish, the good coral. The good fish. <laughs> Sure. Look at the weather. Yeah. Beautiful. Woo! Yeah, this is incredible. I hope you bring everything. I mean, like a, I got a sunscreen screen. and yeah. a camera. Yeah. That's it. You got lunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're stopping in Via Tape, the main town on Bora Bora, to pick up some other people for the shark adventure. It is so beautiful out here. The water is just so clear. It's unbelievable. That's my uncle. That's your uncle? Yeah. Aww. Ramon. 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 Ramon and Roberto. Roberto and Ramon. just finished the whole like snorkeling adventure and now we're having lunch on this like island which is awesome that's a sweet potato breadfruit banana plant I like yellow that's yeah. a taro root and also that uh, rice salad tuna yeah. salad yeah. Yeah. Fish here. Yeah. for the barbecue yeah. are you hungry yeah. <laughs> buffet set for us and we've got like barbecued meat and chicken and different like things that are Tahitian. What do you think, Jason? Looks good? so good. I know. Here's your diet coke. Thank you. I know. I'm like super excited. The snorkeling took so much out of me. I got so tired. I slept on the boat ride over here. 
Mm. You tried the fish? I did. So yeah. Good. The Tahitian fish is yummy, like in a coconut sauce. The pool area at the Four Seasons has the best setting on the island. It's the only resort where the pool and the beach both face towards the incredible center mountain. All day long while you lay by the pool in a hammock or you're on the beach, you can gaze at the incredible beauty of Mount Atemaneo. As mentioned earlier, the pool area does not have a hot tub, which I think is a shame because even though it's warm in Tahiti, I still like to soak in hot water. So for the hot tubs, you will need to go to the spa facility. The wool bar is the only place that serves lunch besides ordering room service. There are many attendants servicing the pool and beach area and they will take your orders for food and drinks, plus they will bring around ice and water to keep everyone hydrated. I think the lack of lunch options plus those lunch options being pretty mediocre, was really a huge letdown for me. That of course didn't stop me from eating. All pool chairs and beach umbrellas are first come first serve, and we never had an issue finding a place to hang out, and we were there during spring break and the resort was fully booked. Additionally, you don't need to pack a beach bag. Your room comes with a Four Seasons tote that you can use and take home as a keepsake. I noticed that many or all other Bora Bora resorts gave their patrons branded beach bags as well. The beach hut also has a huge tub of thick white sunscreen, which is very helpful since I packed a lot of sunscreen and I was still running low. We go bottoms up, we go all the way. When you're feeling down, push the pain away. We go bottoms up, we go all the way. And face the another day. We go bottoms up. Kim is doing her thing right now. She's live on Instagram. It's just kind of impromptu live for anyone who happens to be on their phone right at this moment. But I think we have bad internet here, so the live might be cutting in and out. But she's amazing. Look at this. This is like part of the whole snorkeling experience. So that it like wraps around. It wraps all throughout the property. Now she's going to show all this new coral. Wonderful. This is pretty great. The Four Seasons has been just incredible. You've loved it, right? Jason says that he likes this better than Hawaii, which is, uh, it's like a stab in my heart. <laughs> I'm not saying like it better than Hawaii. There are things I do like better. Quiet and less crowds. Yes. The views are better. Absolutely. I mean, it's amazing. The Those two warmer. things. Water's warmer, less crowds, beautiful views, overwinter bungalows. All right, you guys, I'm on the bed and I'm about to get an 80 minute facial here. They use a product called Ice Sun that are all natural and cold pressed, so... We'll see how they do. It's supposed to be a super hydration facial, and I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. You know from watching my channel and watching my other social media platforms that I indulge in spas all over the world. Besides the couple's massages we enjoyed on the day of arrival, I also booked an 80-minute hydration facial. I booked this facial right before dinner so that my face would be glowing and plump and that I wouldn't ruin anything out on the beach. My facialist had exceptional hands, which quickly put me to sleep. It was incredibly therapeutic and indulgent, leaving me feeling hydrated and glowing for dinner that evening. Just finished that beautiful facial. Jason already left to go to dinner, but I'm gonna be joining him in a minute because they called a car. But look at how beautiful and hydrated my face feels. And look, she had the most incredible hands. Like seriously, it took me away to another world. I just, I loved it. All I can say so far is that the spa, every person that has like done anything for me from the massage to the facial, has been excellent, like so good. Like I'm very, very impressed. The gym facility is directly across from the spa and features windows looking out over the ocean. What are you gonna eat? I don't know, I was thinking about French toast, right. lots of potatoes. I think you'll sleep all day. You're gonna eat bacon and eggs. That's right, gotta keep up with you all day. What are you gonna have for breakfast? Bacon. Maybe we'll have some good juice. Oh, they have the best orange juice. It's hand squeezed here. Oh. So that is definitely a high priority for me at breakfast because it's so yummy. One thing to keep in mind is if you're a snack person, like you like nuts and chips and dried fruit and stuff like that, you're going to need to bring it with you, like cookies. You're going to need to pack it because the only place to buy anything is in the store behind me and it does not really stock very much. They have like one Mars bar and some kind of chip thing. And the other thing to remember to bring is your own medicine, Tylenol, et cetera, and ibuprofen because they do not sell it. You can go to the on-site doctor and he will give you medicine. But if you just like want your own supply, you can't buy it here at the store. So you need to bring snacks and medicine if those things are like 
things that you need in your life. And he's limited hours, 9.30 to 6. And he's limited hours, so you need to pack your own stuff like that. It's our last morning at Four Seasons Bora Bora. We're going to head over and get breakfast, lay out for a little bit, then come back and pack up our stuff. We've had the best time here. It is amazing and more incredible than I thought it would be, honestly. I wasn't sure because so many people come out here and the screensavers and everything look beautiful. But honestly, the people here are so kind and gentle and just sweet. They sing their language. It's just really intoxicating. And we just loved it. And we love being in an overwater bungalow. It's just been beautiful. And of course, we can't wait to return. Time for the cost. Before I lay out all these details, please keep in mind, we all have different budgets and we all have different priorities where we place our funds and our resources. Travel and experiences have always been really high on my priority list, and it's where we do place a lot of our resources and funds each year. I'm only sharing these details with you to give you more insight. So please control yourself with your judgment on what we spent. Last, I'm not including our flight costs because flights vary with different carriers and what level of uh, ticket you choose. However, I will include the flight cost in the Air Tahiti Nui video. So make sure to check that out. I will also have a video coming that compares St. Regis and the Four Seasons and goes over essentially the cost and the comparison for this entire trip. Okay, here we go. We stayed at the Four Seasons in Bora Bora for four nights over spring break in 2023 in the least expensive overwater bungalow they offered. The room total for four nights was $5,327. The food totaled $2,352. Our spa treatments, which included our two 80-minute couples massages and my personal 80-minute facial, totaled $1,072. Our snorkeling activity totaled $387. For the total for four nights at the Four Seasons, it was $9,139. Here are my thoughts on the prices. First, the room is steep, but when you compare it to other luxury villa type situations where you have multiple rooms, you really are looking at $2,000 plus a night in Napa, in anywhere really for that type of facility. So I don't think that the rooms are overpriced. The food in Bora Bora and pretty much in Tahiti I am learning is super expensive and that was no joke there. Obviously we spent a ton of money on food. I don't know if we're being overcharged or if it's just the situation of being really remote, needing to bring in a lot of food and then all of that food also getting an additional 30% import fee put on it. I understand from locals there that food is crazy expensive. Everything's really expensive in French Polynesia. I thought the spa treatments were actually right in line with what they should cost. In Napa, for instance, a couple's massage, an 80 minute one can be easily a thousand dollars, 500 per piece. So the fact that our spa bill was only a thousand dollars and we had the couple's massage and my facial, I think that those prices aren't astronomically bad. They might sound really bad, but in comparison to where I've been lately, they're not that off the mark. And finally, I thought our snorkeling adventure for the day was awesome, totally worth $387. We loved our captain. He made it so fun. We had a great time going around the island. One of the things I loved about the snorkeling adventure was that we did circumnavigate the entire island. So I got to see it from lots of different uh, viewpoints and just kind of see how everything connected. Plus the barbecue that they gave us out there was great. Like we were so happy with it. And so that was another like high point for us. I hope these details give you insight for this trip and if you're planning one and it helps you budget what you might have to spend on it. I hope you feel inspired to add this destination to your travel bucket list because it was a magical, luxurious experience and I can't wait to return. And we liked the Asian restaurant Via Motti. How did it eat? It's this problem I'm having. But it caught it, right?